All right, let's go. Ayo, we're three hot guys sharing our opinions because we're special and different. Gold medals, we're winning. Can't help it if we're burdened by our intellect. You can play checkers while we pretend we know the rules to chess. The council has spoken, and we are the chosen. Your nose is broken because I broke it. And welcome back to another episode of Will of the Council. It's your boy, Joseph Rothschild, a.k.a. Mr. Blister. And, of course, we've got uh, Jordan in the booth. Mm, my tummy hurts, guys. Dude, I'm proud of you. That, that, threw me off, that threw me off so much that I had to be like, we've got Danny where exactly? Where's Danny? I didn't even hear you say that. <laughs> yeah. Are you doing uh, all right, I'm, I'm Danny? doing great. And you know what? Uh, I, you're king, Jordan, for getting through that tummy ache. Uh, my, my tummy hurts. I drank a – I'm doing this thing with my wife. God. Uh, and I drink like three bottles of wine because I read online that that's what you're supposed to do uh, for date night. He has been fuming and chomping at the bit <laughs> to talk about bottle night. Hey! Uh, oh yes, 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 yes. Oh yeah, my god! Right. Let me begin post. by let me begin by asking you, dear viewer, <laughs> do you know what a bottle night is? <laughs> All right. Probably not. I learned from my goat on on x.com um that you know a great date is to sit down with your partner and drink a full bottle of wine. <laughs> I mean I I imagine it's pretty fun. I got to no, say I, the, the thing so, is like people are clowning on this or cuz I don't on, know hold if on. Got you're, some, you're like, going too fast. We haven't even read the post yet. You're right. I, you know what? Yeah, you know, yeah, somebody yeah. take it away. So, somebody read the post. What are we talking about? relative to a bottle night well genius colin rutherford 89 26 year old founder of at green box storage <laughs> uh doing 518 million dollars in annual revenue with a following base of 87 uh posted do you know what a bottle night is probably not because my gf and i invented it during a 2023 blizzard in buffalo new york okay okay we right. lock our phones yeah. we turn the tv off we each grab a bottle of wine and we talk. That's it. We simply talk and enjoy each other's presence. We live together, but it's easy to miss out on quality time. What do you think? Do you have other methods for enjoying quality time with your partner? Um, this rocks. This I mean, I, 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 I want to be the first one to say this is so funny. It's so good. I, I like genuinely, because I saw a lot of people quoting this and clowning on this. And I don't know if this, like, if they were, I, I don't know. You know how Twitter is. Like, somebody is like a landlord or like an entrepreneur and really they just like inherited all their money from like a dead parent or some shit. Um, but like, I think like this idea is actually really cool. You know, like, yes, it is getting <laughs> drunk with, you. they didn't invent getting drunk with your girlfriend or whatever. But like, I think people sometimes, um, like you, you, you don't understand how much of an impact like the phone and the TV actually has. Like, they really can get in the way of quality time, right? So just like, you know, not to be all black mirror about it, but like putting your phone away and not having the TV on and like genuinely just sitting and connecting with your partner is really fun. And I thought this was like actually kind of a good date idea. And he does explain it well. Like, how do you invest in quality time with your partner? And I don't know. So I went to bat for this post, but apparently there's like some agenda with it. I don't fucking know. I'm not Twitter brained enough. Jordan, you are... You are so easy to trick. How, how are you oh getting my tricked? God. I, it's just a guy posting about date No, night. I just, I I love the way your mind no, works. It's, it's just so beautiful. It's incredible. He's a gem. It's, like, the, the concept that it's like, you know what? Many people are clowning on this guy, but phones really do prevent communication, <laughs> honestly, between partners. It's like, uh-huh. What he's advocating is to drink a bottle of wine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, how different is that from, like, going to the bar with your partner? Like. Two, three, completely beers. and totally different. Yeah, what? Completely and totally. Here, here's okay. I will, I will tell you, Jordan. Here is the version of this that isn't insane. <laughs> Go to a restaurant <laughs> yeah, with your partner. Literally. That's the version of this that doesn't sound like you are just inventing alcoholism. <laughs> like the first guy who's like, "Hey, if I drink a lot of this, I feel really good. Yeah, what if I do that every night? Okay, what if, what if we had, you know?" a bottle night put away the phones put away the tv 
and we just drank and drank and drank. <laughs> I I would have a shit ton of fun with this. I would of crack course open. You would. I would crack yeah. open a Sauvignon Blanc. Well, it's My wife not would hard like... to have fun uh, at drinking with like someone you like. Of course, it's Jordan. Fun. I have I have drank with you. You are not making it through a bottle. You're getting like one ninth of the bottle in and passing out. Like, oh my god! You go big mode on like two glasses of wine and then yeah, conk. Oh man, I fucking I, I also love wine. I I love wine so oh, much. It's god. so good. Okay, here's what I'll say. Uh, I think that you're correct. The TVs and phones do get in the way of intimacy. I think also alcoholism gets in the way of intimacy. I think like yeah, you should talk to your partner. Make some time to like speak with your partner and that be the thing that you're focusing on but like not with i he is holding <laughs> he's he's drinking. okay for the viewers at home you can't see this image but it's the guy is literally drinking the wine bottle from the from the opening of the bottle like it's a beer oh and yeah, it, he's doing Edward Forty Hands type yeah. shit with a bottle <laughs> so of wine. I mean, it <laughs> rocks, but it's so funny. It's it's and uh, you know if it's if it's you split the bottle of wine, well, that's just a fancy meal, right? But they each have their own <laughs> yeah, enormous own bottle. cheap bottle of wine. <laughs> it's huge. It's awesome. <laughs> oh wait, is she hold on. I think is she holding Winking Owl? Oh, that's not Winking Owl. Okay, I was gonna say if it's Winking Owl, then like I'm so in. Uh, that's what? the Aldi oh, my brand. God. You're gonna be winking. Yeah. You're gonna be. Oh my god. Uh, you know, I like the concept that like, what if this guy was just like a raging alcoholic and then thought of an epic way to justify <laughs> it? Like his wife was like, "You're drinking. You're drinking so much. This is really hurting us." And the guy was like, "Hold up. I can do this. Uh, what if we just get deep into each other's minds every night, and we use the alcohol as a barometer to replace those." disgusting distractions like the phone and tv and she's like wow that's so sensitive of you and he's like hell yeah brother this would work all right that's me. one night a week down how am i getting the other six <laughs> can we also talk about that he said he invented it during a 2023 blizzard so they, they're yeah. snowed in and he's like i wonder what can we can do snowed in you know what what if we both drink. drink a bottle of wine <laughs> I will say that is a classic snowed in thing to do. That is snowed in. I've I've been, look, look, the state I live in, I've been doing a lot of that throughout my life. (laughs) Of course you have. That does not shock me in the slightest. Uh. Uh, (laughs) No, like the thing that, the thing that I clown on with this post is the invented it. Like, what did you invent? Getting drunk with my wife. (laughs) (laughs) My favorite is he keeps responding to people like, I did. You invented talking? Yup. I invented drinking too. <laughs> my my goat. He is the goat. Uh, uh, such a good oh post. My God. Um, I this says, have you tried bottle night with no bottle? Get inside each other's minds sober. This guy goes, you get inside each other's minds easier with alcohol. All right, this guy's this definitely guy's an just an alcoholic. He's literally just literally an alcoholic. An alcoholic. <laughs> He's literally an alcoholic. Oh my god. I will say what what do you guys say to Will of the council meet up next time we're all together. We have a bottle night. I would, I would really appreciate that. Don't, don't offer that to Jordan because you know he has. It will immediately accept with no problem. Jordan can have one of those like singleton truly bottles. <laughs> we we got to have like a baggy from... like the, the Capri Sun wine like b- b- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> box yeah. Wine. just juice at this point. <laughs> <sighs> uh, I already know what I'm I'm bringing. I'm bringing the nice New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. I'm cooking my famous mac and cheese and doing some chicken thighs. Famous and mac we're and gonna, cheese. Oh, I'm in. I I, I, <laughs> I cook a crazy good mac and cheese. Oh, I will be honest with you. I'm 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 excited. I'm all right, I'm all I'll, in. I'll see you all for bottle night. See you yes, all for see. bottle um, night, baby. <laughs> get to the posts. Yeah, but before we before we get too bogged down on uh, drinking alone with your partner, <laughs> uh, let's instead talk about going out to a restaurant. A restaurant of a very specific type. Our first post today comes from r slash relationship advice. And between you all and me, I love the relationship advice vo- uh, posts. I like the am I the asshole posts. The relationship advice posts, there's stakes. You know, there's like, oh, yeah, we could really fuck this person's life up. Oh, my God. And, uh, I hate you. <laughs> this one is six days old. It says I F24. And Jordan, I'm you're going to have to do your best to not get so hard you pass out in the next three words. Okay. 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 Used to work at a restaurant. Oh, 
Oh my god! And down he goes. Oh my god! And what my the fuck I think is... I have COVID. <laughs> and my boyfriend M28 saw a pic of my. I think it's supposed to be me in the uniform, and now is really pissed. Why? So this one's already off to a good start because it's not asking like, how do I salvage this relationship? Like, uh, what do I do? <laughs> Instead, they're asking, what the fuck is wrong with my dumb yeah. idiot boyfriend? Just, Which is a perspective I could appreciate. I really yeah. respect it. Just why? <laughs> what's the problem god restaurant is so good. restaurant from when i was 18 to 21 i worked in one of those chain restaurants or bars that have waitresses wearing very little clothing i was a broke nursing school student and it paid the bills and then some i left when i graduated obviously so i i think what they're talking about is like hooters or yeah. like tilted kilt or something yeah, right yeah oh my god i forgot about tilted okay. kilt wow i've never heard of tilted yeah. kilt oh it's like hooters but like there's a there's like an irish like spin on it oh, like they were yeah. like oh man who gets who gets like really drunk and horny for underage people the irish and then the irish were like hey, hey. that's offensive but we will be going to your establishment <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend and i have been dating for only eight months the relationship is still relatively new but also long enough that we are comfortable with each other well this weekend i guess one of his friends saw a picture of me hanging on the wall at this restaurant the picture is me and a few other girls with a kind of famous baseball player who happened to come in, and the owner recognized him. I hardly remember that day, as he wasn't even at my table. I just happened to be around when the picture was taken. I'm probably 19 in the photo. When my boyfriend received this picture, he was so mad. He told me it's embarrassing for his friends to see that, and I should have told him. I told him I don't think about this photo of me hanging on a wall from five years ago. He was adamant that I disrespected our relationship. Oh, my God. Oh, this guy rocks. <laughs> Last paragraph. Am I missing something? <laughs> I didn't put the picture up. I didn't remember it was there. I'm clearly just a barely legal adult in it, and I didn't even remember it until it was brought up again. Like, geez, what happened? Is he embarrassed about the uniform, or is it something else? Does anyone even know? I'm at a loss. Oh, my God. Wow. How, what how, are we doing with this that's one? That's awesome. How do I, here's the thing that baffles me ever since I've started uh, doing this show and, and continued to do it, is that I don't, I always was like, men just can't get any worse, right? <laughs> <laughs> and oh, lo and behold, Will of the Council worse. hating men again. <laughs> yeah, that's a, oh what do you God. want? I know, I know. No, the, I'm, <laughs> I'm on your side, dude. <laughs> All right. The, uh, honestly, though, the, the thing that I heard... I think it was like a tweet that I saw a while ago or something was why would you date a hot woman if you're going to be mad at her for being hot? Thank you. Holy dude. All I could think about was like, if, if you know, my hot girlfriend was like, yeah, I used to work out like the, the restaurant and they, you know, I was so hot. They put a picture <laughs> up of me. I'd be like, man, my girlfriend's so cool. <laughs> yeah, like exactly. Like, yeah. Uh, oh, my wife posts a hot picture or my or whatever girlfriend posts a hot picture. Damn, she's hot. Like what's the problem? You dated her because you thought she was hot. Uh, I don't want to say it, but like, you know, uh we all know the situation, right? You know, some some boys take a beautiful girl and they hide her away from the rest of the world, right? And I want to be the one to walk in the sun i girls they just want to have fun right true right. that's like, true that's true that's true that's the true. line is the line is correct it is correct it is 100 percent correct i i guess i will go to bat a little bit for the guy here you know we have to we have to get out ahead of the misandry allegations pretty much every episode at this point <laughs> right but like i i will say uh these restaurants are kind of embarrassing i um i remember uh when when i lived in uh i live i grew up in topeka which is like a mid-size Midwestern town, but it has a real problem with like the age of the population. Like kids just leave. So uh, places like Hooters are staffed almost exclusively by like local high school girls. And because there's only like four local high schools, anytime you would go to one, you would like invariably know everyone who was working there. Ugh, and yeah, it was kind of okay. weird to yeah. be like, uh, oh, this is like, this girl that I know, uh, strange. Like, and if you were like an adult, I imagine you would go in and they'd be like, oh, hey, Mr. S. And they'd be like, oh, right. Yeah, that's how this works. Yeah. So I get that, right? But the problem is he learned this from his friend who goes there. Yeah. And you're like, well, okay, that's okay, but it's not cool when you work there. And you're Yeah, I'm, I'm working up there. Yeah, I yeah. feel like the um 
the more embarrassing part of this for sure is that you are attending a restaurant, right? Yeah, yes, it, ha- it has to be worse, right? Because working there, like, well, you gotta have, you gotta eat, right? Like, yeah. sometimes you, you just gotta bag, do a job, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I think the only thing I'll try to be, <laughs> I'll try to find some understanding in only this guy's feelings. I understand it, and it is natural to feel maybe. Uh, what I'll call is insecure and maybe a bit jealous that your girlfriend is hot and and has been at the place where she has to kind of peruse herself to other guys. Yeah. That's like the best stretch I can give you. But it's but it's in the it's five years ago, man. How can you be mad yeah. about something this old? That's the only thing I could maybe understand feeling recognizing the feeling, and then a normal person would go, "Well, that's ridiculous. It's been a while," you know, like. <laughs> And then moving on. (laughs) I guess I would say, like, I think the guy's feelings of embarrassment, like, I understand right at a very, like, base level. It's like, you know, the existence of, like, these fucking restaurants in America is, like, deeply embarrassing. And, like, working at them, you know, can be very... Working at them and going to them is occasionally, like, weird and skeevy and degrading. And, like... Oh, you know, I'm in a long-term relationship with someone and here she is all over the walls at this place. Uh can be kind of a weird destabilizing experience. Um that's something that you are allowed to be skeeved out by. It is not something you're allowed to make anybody else's problem. Yeah. Like yep. we all know how this works. We all you know, we all deal with the existence of these restaurants and you know, it's something that like, well, she was 19. You can maybe have a chuckle with your partner about it, like, ha ha, ah, man, well, you know, nursing school doesn't pay for itself. Um, but I can't imagine being, like, a 28-year-old guy and being like, how could you deceive me in such a way? <laughs> it's, you, it's, you it's, it's baby shit. Yeah, and that's, uh, yeah, what? like, I don't even know. I, to me, this even extends to, like, if you found out that the person you're dating used to be, like, a like a stripper or something or used to do sex work in some way I, i'm not equating working at a hooters to doing sex work and well maybe i maybe uh, whatever i'm not gonna you're have making, that debate I mean, we get it you're, it, you're it, making it's a somewhat point. analogous yeah, i understand I what you're saying yeah. it's like like who fucking cares it was like forever ago you know it's like she was a literal teenager in this yeah, picture she's yeah. like i was 19 like i i just wanted a job you know like i get it <laughs> like yeah. just working at a restaurant like yeah man yeah. This is the, uh, this is the world. Like, hot women will find jobs in in things like this. Like, it's yeah, <laughs> it's not great. I don't know. But who cares? It, it just even I can't even. I mean, you guys are talking about like understanding the embarrassment. Like, I guess kind of because these restaurants, like the the fact that these restaurants even exist, is embarrassing yeah. to me. But like, I don't know if I was if I started dating somebody. And it turned out that they used to work at one of these. It's like, okay, who fucking cares? I used to be a barista. That's also cringe in its own way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, let, let me be clear. Uh, disclaimer. The, what I said originally is actually how I feel, which is like, right. oh, shit, that's cool. Who cares? You know, that's how yeah, I yeah. actually feel. The, yeah, it's, yeah, that's it's fair. Okay. Just, just trying to play devil's advocate and absolutely failing. But, you know, just to... Yeah, I'm... Go- I'm- we're reaching for this yeah, guy. Exactly. We're trying to give him not, you know, not some at all role. How I feel. <laughs> this guy. Sucks. Uh, I actually didn't know you. Uh, I didn't know you used to be a barista. I'm actually pretty embarrassed that you're yeah, on I'm this actually, podcast. I'm now. actually pretty embarrassed. Like, I'm gonna. I, and mm. the thing that sucks about it is that working as a barista does turn you into a coffee snob. Really? And so I am mm. that type of person where it's like, I only drink light roast. Like, sorry. I. I that is so this, funny. What can you tell us? So what's strange. the difference? Like you're like I can't do it anymore. So like light roast is obviously it's not roasted as long, so it has a higher caffeine content, and oh. a light roast coffee like keeps a lot of the natural like coffee fruit kind of flavors in it. Um, and then a dark roast, you just fucking roast that shit until it's like burnt like shit. Yeah, and yeah. It tastes like ass. I don't know. I can't. I can't <laughs> do it anymore. Like I'll drink diner I mean, coffee black or whatever. But like what I really prefer to drink is a nice light roast. Co- God, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. You're doing it. You I know. I wanted, I'm I doing it. You, dude. I wanted you yeah. to get into it so bad. <laughs> you caught me monologuing. You caught me You sit down. You sit down with me and Danny. Tell us about the difference between light and dark roast over an entire bottle of wine. We can make this happen. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. Can we go to Tilted Kilt? Can we go to a restaurant? Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. Do do we want to vote on this yeah. one? Uh, yeah, sure. Decision time. All right. I think we could three, two, one this. Okay. Um, on on three, is the girl in this story the asshole? One, two, three. No. No. <laughs> no. 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 I'll even go so far as to answer your question. Break up with this guy. Yeah, yeah. Here's the answer yeah. to your question. Why? Because he sucks. That's yeah. why. That's my <laughs> simple answer. Go. The council has spoken. It's it's something that you can... Th this is one of those scenarios. Sometimes a guy will say something that is so cryptically like insane <laughs> that you kind of have to dig out what the fuck he's yes. mad about, right? Yeah. That's why she's like, here. This is this is one of those things where like the answer to why are you mad about this is going to immediately illuminate if you need to get the fuck out of this relationship right now yeah. or if it's like, "Oh, he's just a little insecure in weird ways." And I would give a 95% chance that you got to go. I agree. Yeah, this is for not sure. Keep going. I got to say, though, I love this response of it's because it, we've read a lot of these posts. And I, I, I'm i pretty sure one of you said this before we started talking about it. But it's like, I, I love it. It's not like, how do I save the relationship or anything like that? It's literally like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? <laughs> it's so good. It's so I love good. that. Is he stupid? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is <Right>. he, dumb? <laughs> I love it. I love All it. Right. <sighs> Well, while we're talking about a guy that is incomprehensibly mad about something, we now will turn our attention to a woman that is incomprehensibly mad about something. Ah, oh, see? Okay. We're not, okay. just, we're not okay. just misandrists here. This is great for all of you women haters in the audience. I know we've got a couple that are like, I'm always going to side with the man, and we do not make it easy for you. Yeah, no. I don't even know how you could exist that way. That's just impossible. That's just... Uh, like fuming while you eat your um your peanut butter and jelly sandwich after the hello fresh meal yeah. like i i totally get him <laughs> uh this one comes from th uh, a throwaway on r slash am i the asshole and it is in poo mode what which the, is I okay I, it's oh this God, okay i i am gonna have reddit. to explain to you just a little oh bit of the God, stupid reddit tree of this <laughs> so when a post is in uh, proctologists only orifice mode by the way, P-O, proctologist only makes sense, but they had to make it poo, so they had to think of another O word. Only users with high karma are able to comment. So the short of it is, like, if a post makes its way to the front page of Reddit, they have to turn this on because otherwise Redditors with no ability to speak to another human being will weigh in with their terrible ass advice. And this is one of those posts. Holy shit. Okay. Wow. Oh, my That's God. So this, so this says... Am I the asshole for telling our friend she isn't better just because she didn't get an epidural? Oh, all right, uh, real quick. Do you you all you all know what an epidural is, hell right? Hell yeah, childbirth. I a actually, subject we are yeah. absolutely qualified to weigh in on. <laughs> I was gonna say oh, I actually I, I've heard the term, but I actually have not researched it myself. <laughs> it's the uh, it's like the cocktail of drugs that they give you while you're having a kid, and it it's like a, a shitload of painkillers. Okay, basically. okay, got it. <laughs> and Sorry. there, I will say before we get into it, there is a um uh sort of a oh, how do I describe this a schism among like mommy Facebook groups about like the moms who got an epidural and the moms who didn't insofar as like the ones who didn't like really gave birth and toughed it out. And the ones who did like weren't cut out for it. Yeah, you know it, what I'm saying? Yeah. I do, uh, funnily, okay. funnily enough, okay, I, I actually have heard people argue about this before. Yeah. So wow. yeah, like I have, I have been exposed to this argument. I still can't believe that the, the, Four, or the four, the three like out of touchiest dudes are about to weigh in on this. Hey, dude, I'm I'm not that out of touch in childbirth. You know, I've been I've been practicing. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, good, I, I, great man. <laughs> I've been practicing. How's it How's it working out for you? Uh, uh you know, practice makes perfect. Baby. All right, uh, women of the audience, we're starting off strong. Sorry, my twenty eight F. Friend Sarah, 27F, recently gave birth to her first child one month ago. She is the youngest in our friend group and is the last one to have a child. We were very excited to meet both her child and to support her during postpartum and her journey into motherhood. We got to see her this Friday and everything was going well. We all enjoyed meeting the group as a whole and motherhood seemed to be finding her well. But then another friend of ours asked about her birth experience. 
Sarah told us about it and mentioned that she did not have an epidural. I was a little annoyed, as some moms seem to think going through this unnecessary pain is something to brag about. I didn't think Sarah was like this, so I said as a joke, but cool, did they give you a medal or should we do that? She asked me what that comment was necessary for, and I told her she knew all of us chose to have an epidural, and shaming us for it is not a good look, and that not having an epidural isn't something to brag about. She told me it was not her intention to do so, but our friends agreed with me and told her that I was right. If her point wasn't to bring us down or to brag, she could have just avoided mentioning it. She said she was sorry if she upset us, but that she really did not mean it that way. It became sour, so we all decided to leave. I thought she would text us later to apologize, but instead her husband sent us a text from her number and told us Sarah was incredible during birth and would have been with or without an epidural, and that we were the ones shaming her for not having one. We didn't respond, but instead created another group chat talking about it. What we all agreed on is that she, like many moms who don't choose the epidural, didn't intentionally try to shame us, but they very often think of themselves as superior, and it was sad that Sarah, who is otherwise a very kind-hearted person, turned out to be this way. We don't believe we are assholes, but Sarah has not talked with us since, and my husband told me that I thought it was worth ruining a 15-year friendship over it, then so be it. I would like to know if we are the assholes here or Sarah is. Okay. Ugh. Gee. I have given you today an incredible gift. The ability to be as misogynistic as you would like. <laughs> <No>. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Honestly, reading this, I was like totally expecting to be like, oh my God, yet again, another person's like, well, I mean, even the way you framed it before we started was like, yeah, a mm -hmm. person didn't have an epidural. Yeah, I got you, didn't I? You did, you did. <laughs> uh, and now I'm like, wait a minute. All she did was just passively mench up, mentioning not getting an epidural. And then the rest of them, like, assumed yeah. she was talking about it from a point yep. of superiority. Yep. Like, whoa. I, I was, like, reading this, like, the fucking Atla manuscript where I'm like, is where's the rest of it? Like, <laughs> I, I where's the point where the woman who just gave birth is like, yeah, I didn't get an epidural, you know. I just thought it was a little more natural, unlike the rest of you fucking losers. <laughs> yeah. But instead, she's just like, yep, the, the, the pregnancy went so well, I actually didn't even need the epidural. And they were like, oh, didn't you? Oh, look at asshole over here. Miss like, no I guess epidural. I should just fucking jump off a bridge, <laughs> huh? I guess, oh, I did get the epidural, so I guess I should stuff the kid back in there, huh? That's what you're saying? Wow, mm. look at super pussy over here. <laughs> this this is like the way Joseph would react to me uh, in, in a very, like, ironic manner of me being like, hey, yeah, like, oh, I actually aced this or something. And he'd be like, oh, well, I didn't. So why don't you go screw yourself? And I'm like, yeah. okay, dude, chill. <laughs> like, <laughs> as a, like, very obvious oh, joke. <laughs> I Well, okay, so I will be just a little bit extremely misogynistic about this. <laughs> but, like, okay, ugh. Women, like, what is going on <laughs> dude, in this dude, story? Dude, dude, I had that thing thought. I was like, "Damn, women are scary." <laughs> yes. So, like, this woman is in the fucking ER, just completed childbirth, recounting the details of what is probably the most harrowing experience that she'll have to do in her entire life. Right. Uh, and they're like, "Oh, well, did you want a medal for not getting an epidural?" <laughs> You know, regardless of the fact that she just gave birth, that's just not something you say to a friend. Well, maybe I do that's now. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was like, I, I would appreciate a medal, yes. <laughs> um, And then they all get so mad that she mentioned it <laughs> that they all leave. And then the husband, by the way, the husband here. Dude, oh this my guy. fucking God, what a... What a king. Hero. What a king. Hero. He sends hero, a message hero, that's hero, like, hero, hero. Stand behind he my like, man hey. here because this is quality husband behavior. He's like, listen, uh, I, I understand you all were upset. I think she did such a great job. She would have been great with or without the epidural. Let's just forget about the whole thing. And what do they do in response? Create a group chat that doesn't include her so they can talk shit about her. Wow. That's yeah. where I really was like, really, women are scary. Why would you do this? Yeah. That's so, it's, first off, it's so high school. So like oh it's so, so dumb it's so gossipy to be like this like come on be yeah. be adults Jesus Christ I love it. we thought she would send us an apology for what for exactly what? For, yeah. for what the minute you create a side group chat to make fun of you to exclude and and talk shit about your one friend is like how do you not stop and be like oh maybe I'm in the wrong here you know like, are we the baddies like yes the 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 best is at the end she's still trying to like justify this and 
her own husband is like, I don't know, you know, I don't know, honey. Is this really worth it ruining your 15 year friendship with this person? If it is, go for it. Oh my God. I do like it. Sarah is otherwise a very kind hearted person. It sucks that she turned out this way. Right. Like, which whoa. means, which means in this scenario, <laughs> someone who gave birth and told them about it. <laughs> yeah. It sucks that she's, it's so funny because you're right. She, she says this in a way that's like, well, well I'm not the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like honestly. Immediately upon receiving pushback for saying she didn't use an epidural, she's like, "Oh, sorry. Like I I'm I don't mean to like imply anything. You know, I'm just recounting what happened." And then everyone is immediately like, "Hmm. I see." It's like that's that's already an apology. Like I don't know what more you want. Yeah. Like yeah. she said this thing uh. like just mentioning this passively, you know, communicated something that she clearly did not mean to communicate immediately goes to apologize like immediately apologize like oh my gosh i'm sorry i did not mean it that way and everybody else is just like mm, you did though we know what you people <laughs> yeah, are, are like sure? and it's yeah. like what the fuck <laughs> All he did. i i will say i understand that some people are like this yes. like do shame right, right. mothers for uh, for using an epidural and you know i'm not gonna assume anything but i imagine some of these women probably have experienced that type of shaming you know after their pregnancy and are probably carrying that baggage with them 100%. right and so hearing hearing it from a friend can feel pointed even if it clearly isn't but this is just one of those things where i think you have to step back and be like am i making an experience i had everyone else's problem yeah. like yeah. am i making it so that i can't have real genuine friendships as a result of of how what i'm inferring from what my friends are saying and like yeah right like yes. holy shit that is exactly what she's doing a 100 yeah. yeah this is whack this is whack behavior i i love the the way she says so i said as a joke cool did they give you a medal like as if this is like any, how is that a how joke is that funny in any regard that that's just passive aggressive right like that's just yeah. mean it's it's so funny that like the whole framing of this is <sighs> i've mentioned this before but like people on am i the asshole will write posts really to try to make them not look like the asshole but also with the the thin veneer of trying to be objective when they're in their writing but like framing this is so i said as a joke like no, that wasn't a joke. You said that to be mean. Like you said that yeah, to be, be mean real. and hurtful and spiteful. You Come know, on. um, it it sucks. This wow, this is like really rough to read. These people are not yeah, nice. I, it, well, it's I think it is is a um a little bit of a glimpse into the psyche of this type of person. And we all know people like this who like when you say something, it like immediately becomes an affront by them to you. And like, they're like, well, if she and, you know, the response to something like, are you really going to torch the friendship over this is be like, I think you mean, is she going to torch the friendship over this? All she has to do is apologize to oh me and my, my friends. God. And it's like, I'm sorry. Like at the point you are making these group chats in order to specifically exclude this new mother, like you got to reevaluate your part in this story. This is like really, really gross. Yeah, also really shit move for somebody that just gave childbirth and is starting out motherhood, like probably the most stark change you can have in your life. If any of your resolution is just be like, oh, I'm just going to cut them off and not be a part of their life anymore. Like that sucks so bad. Parenthood is something that you really want to depend on friends for, you know, because yeah. uh, it's just it changes your life so much. If I hopped into an ER to talk to a friend who had just given birth uh, and they uh, they called me a racial slur, I would probably be like, damn, well, they just went through a lot. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> right. Like, like, the, and these people are not these people are not willing to give any slack. A group of other people with kids. They're not willing to give any slack to this person who was like, oh, I didn't get an epidural. And so and they're like, oh, what was that? Like, you need to apologize for that immediately. And she was like, okay, I will. And they were like, hmm, that's not enough. Yeah. This sucks. Damn. Crazy. Wow. I do want to know why everyone in the friend group seems to think that she was in the wrong. 
Like this, this has got to be a yeah, whole like uh, that's a good point. A whole collection of really fucking terrible people. How many people did she say? Was it like? Do we have a number or just the group of friends? Right. The the friend. Yeah. Group. I imagine it's like it's at least two other. Yeah. People. At least yeah, a it's couple. Be like four total. I'm thinking. And like, how do you? How, how many people could conceivably be? stand to be around each other? Yeah. What. This has to be like festered toxicity, right? Like they had to have been in the past, like, oh yeah, well she thinks she's so much better than us, blah blah blah. For yeah. like, and now yeah, it just comes really out through another, like, you know, she was so kind, and then she said that awful thing to us. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, and it reads yeah, like a right. sitcom. It has to. Yeah, have, there has to have been some resentment within the friend group leading up to this, and then this is just an excuse to finally exclude this person. And it's probably something that they've been wanting to do all this time, which, again, is shitty, yeah. but I don't know. Yeah. All right. You want to vote on this? We can do a three, two, oh, one. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Decision time. All right. When it comes to uh, the slighted friend who was told such a disgusting thing by her so-called friend in the ER, is the original poster of this post an asshole? Three. Two, one, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Awful, awful, poopy awful, awful behavior. The council has spoken. I see why they put it in the poopy head yeah, mode. Yeah, asshole poo mode. I can't stop thinking about that. It's it's so funny because if you don't see it on Reddit for the viewers at home, it, there's like a red label and it says asshole mm -hmm. poo mode. And I'm like, okay, but that's just yeah. hilarious. I'm going poo mode yeah. on this person. Like, <laughs> this oh, post we're going is poo mode, so baby. Poo mode. I, <laughs> so poo mode. I imagine that uh, probably what happened is this made it to r slash all, and like all the like fucking incel subreddits were like, see, it? these women hate each uh, other, and it was like, okay, okay, all right, let's get these I people out of here. I guess the poo mode makes yeah. sense then, like, because the R I am and the asshole community has to be like, okay, the people who are here regularly and actually like converse and get like upvotes normally can be here. The randos get out. <laughs> <laughs> we need that. It is a very, you know, we make fun of the name of the tool, but it is a very powerful tool. Get out randos. Yeah. The yeah. Machine, the button you press that kills Redditors. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty good. Keeps only the good Favorite posters button. in. <laughs> All right. This last one comes from Danny's mom. What? And it says, am I the asshole for starting an argument with my son? On why he was afraid to come out as gay. <laughs> You're so fucking annoying. It hurts my soul. That's oh, that's right, folks. We've been we've been uh, we've been misogynist. We've been misandrist, and now we're gonna be homophobic. Oh. Everybody ready? <laughs> okay, Stop. I'm not answering you. Stop. I'm not answering you. I hate you. <sighs> uh, am I the asshole for being hurt and upset that my son was afraid to tell me he was gay? My youngest boy, Trevor, 16M, finally told me he was gay yesterday on his birthday. He came home from school holding his boyfriend, Jorge's hand and just announced it. I was a little surprised because earlier last week I asked if Jorge was his boyfriend and he shut down on me and kept repeating, I'm not a uh, yeah, can't, slur. Mm, nope, can't say that one. Nope. Ooh, I just okay. gave him a hug and I told him I loved him. Then his brothers and his mom took their turns getting their hugs in. I asked him later what changed and why he reacted like he did when I asked, and he tells me he was afraid. But me asking and then not making a fuss made him feel safe. I was confused, because as far as I know, I've never said anything explicitly homophobic, though I don't think I've been super supportive of anything either, to be fair. I asked why he was scared, and he tells me, because I'm such a gruff country guy, and that we went to church every Sunday and were farmers where we live. I'd sometimes laugh at granddad's jokes about girly boys. It hurt me to hear him say that I think I wouldn't love him. I love him and he gets mad and says it's not about me, it's about how he feels. I tell him I know, but it doesn't mean it doesn't sting. He tells me I should just be glad I wasn't afraid to tell me now and that I was overreacting. He stormed off upset. My wife says I should take the W and leave it at that and not worry about before. Am I the asshole? I mean, I started the other two. One of you guys can jump off and start this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Oh, we just, just, just point fingers here. Yeah, you go, you go, Joseph. Yeah, you're, you're, hey, you're one of them here. queers, ain't you? Uh, okay, well, um, okay. So unfortunately, <laughs> I, I hate to be like this. I know what it sounds like. I think this guy has done a lot right, but like, you are just gonna have to understand that, like, this 
isn't about you. That like right. your kid is going to be able to come out to you on his own time. And even if you are the most supportive, like a uh, capital G good, capital A ally TM, you know, uh, it's still going to hurt to reveal something this intensely personal to another person, you know, even if they're your parent. And I think the mom is right. I think you should be happy that uh, your comments when uh, he clearly brought some dude home that was his boyfriend were enough that he felt safe opening up to you. I think you should just take that instead of being like, well, why wouldn't you feel safe? Like, what have I ever done to make you think that, like, we wouldn't be safe? You know, I, I, I would love you no matter what. It's right. like, yeah, like, I understand that. And the kid probably understands that as well. But it's still super, super hard and super difficult to be this yeah, vulnerable uh, to your parents. You know, everyone has heard stories of this not working out. Everyone has heard the consequences of it. You know, everyone has heard stories about people who were very kind and seemed very supportive until it was their own kid. And then they were like, none of that shit in my house. Yep. So I, I think you have to recognize this is something for him. It is not something for you. And uh, kind of divorce his reaction from how you feel you've performed as an ally. Uh, take the dub. He came out to you and felt safe doing it. That's really the most you can hope for. Yeah, that's. I feel like they're they're like focused too much on how they're upset on like you know not getting told and not focusing on how like how good and important it is that the you know his son was mm -hmm. able to you know actually come up to him and tell him this kind of thing. That's that's like huge, like a huge step, especially if you're like you know a more standard. I guess I'll say. Um, I don't want to say conservative, but like more country, country, uh, guy, church, um, you know, farmers making jokes about this kind of stuff. How, of course, he was not going to feel safe. So, like, the fact that he's able to do it, you should be like, wow, I, I guess I'm doing pretty good. You know, not what perfect. What this strikes me as still is a willful ignorance to how the climate of society still treats gay people, mm -hmm. right? Like, let me explain that. If you have this feeling of, well, he should have came out to me anyway. Like, why Why did he, like, assume that I was going to react a certain way? Like, you know, like, if you don't understand that it's still hard for gay people to come out, especially gay men to, or, you know, gay men to come out to their fathers, like, then you just still don't understand how society still treats gay people poorly, right? Yep. Like... If you don't understand, I mean, especially like how I'd sometimes laugh at granddad's jokes about girly boys, right? Like that was one example, but there's probably a lot of examples of maybe small things you've said or small things you've done that have given them the impression that, you know, you might not be the most supportive when they come out to you, you know? So it it's just, you, you can't just be ignorant of the fact that it is a difficult and vulnerable thing still to this day, even in 2024 to come out to your father that you are gay. You know what I mean? So uh, it really sucks that the, like taking it as a personal slight in this, like just exactly like you guys both said it, but just take the W, you know, the fact that he uh, came out to you is so important. Don't put yourself into yeah. the situation even more than you, you need to be right. The couple of things that are making me say, like, despite the fact that this guy was clearly kind enough that his kid felt fine coming out to him, he's still kind of an asshole here, is because, firstly, he's really not cutting the kid any slack. Like, yeah. just right. like the um, just like the wife who was uh, who had just given birth, like, I guess maybe even in the most generous read possible, saying a little bit of a faux pas around her friends. Like, this kid just did, like, one of the hardest, most difficult things he will ever have to do in his entire life. Like, a, a very vulnerable act. You know, if it didn't happen perfectly, you know, cut him some fucking slack. Not to mention it's your kid, you know? They're not going to yeah. act 100% correctly um, all the time. And uh, secondly, I just, I can't get over the fact that he's, it's, it's a type of behavior that you see a lot in, like, I think liberal parents. Where, like, they constantly want to be reassured 
that they're being this like super epic, extremely good ally at every possible mm-hmm. opportunity. Yep. And mm-hmm. if you imply that they aren't, even by virtue of something like super innocuous, then suddenly you're an asshole and like, you know, um, it's like, what's your problem? I'm doing the best that I can. Isn't that enough for you? And it's like, well, it isn't about you, you know, it, it not being enough for the kid doesn't it doesn't matter if it reflects poorly on you because this isn't a situation about your morality or your morals. It's a situation about the kid being honest with himself. And it, it really, it's really gross watching this person center himself and be like, sheesh, well, what could I have done better? And it's like, that's just not a question you should be asking about something like this. That's a like. really good point. The, 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 that question shouldn't exist at all is a really good point. Like, why are you worrying about what you could have done to like react better? Why don't you ask what can I do to help my kid more? Like how can I for like from this point moving on, how can I communicate that I am accepting of this? Like how do I apologize, you know? Just like stuff like that. Right? Cuz it's not this is not an easy thing to do. And I don't know. This kid did not have to meet your personal metric of coming out to you in a certain way that you approve or whatever. You know, they they came out to you in the way and the time that they thought was appropriate. And you just have to, moving forward, push towards understanding and push towards being further supportive rather than being upset that they didn't think you were being supportive enough. I think... um. It's funny to see how this guy almost stumbles into kind of the perfect response first to make his son feel really safe, you know, because he's like, um, well, why didn't you tell me uh, before when I asked you? And, uh, you know, the sons, of course, is like, well, I was afraid, which is completely understandable. And then he goes, yeah. uh, but me asking this is the son. And then not making a fuss made him feel safe. That's like, that's what you should do. Could like yeah. capitalize on those moments where like, oh, well, I'm glad I made you feel safe. I will always make you try and make you feel safe in my home. I yeah. love you, my son. You know, like that's that's the part you should focus on. And if you fumbled on the way there, that's okay. Don't worry about that. Focus on the good parts. Focus on that section because I found that I was like, well, that's good. You should recognize that part, too. Yeah. Okay. You ready to vote? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Decision time. All right. Uh, Jordan, when it comes to this guy, is he the asshole? 100%. Yeah. Like, uh, the expectation of it. Oh, man. It's like you're mad at your son for being afraid about something that is totally valid to be afraid of. And if you don't recognize that it is valid to be afraid of this, regardless of you know, how you've acted in the past, then you are just still ignorant to how society treats gay people still to this day. So yeah, you're an asshole. You need to be more supportive and focus on the positive stuff. Like Danny said, Danny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you are, you are the asshole. Um, I think there's a lot that, uh, is understandable in this post, but you are definitely the asshole. You know, I think you just got to reevaluate those situations. Don't worry about yourself. Like like you said, Joseph, it's just you're thinking about the wrong person. You're thinking about yourself when you should be thinking about them. No matter how upset or whatever or mad they got at you, just think about them. Think about them. Don't worry about yourself. I, you'll be fine. Yeah. Um. I got to say, I did not think this was going to be a, an easy 3-0, but um, I, I do want to stress, I don't think this guy is an asshole yeah. in general. Like, clearly, he's got, like, his head in a good place. I just think he responded to this uh, this life challenge in a way that was asshole. One hundred percent. I think he's the asshole in this story, but I think that his you know it's a good impulse to want to be supportive of your kid. One million percent. He's on Absolutely the right track. Agree. He's on the right track. On the right he just track. needs to reorient himself. And he's got yep. some good good um, uh, what's it called? Good instincts. The council has spoken. All right. Well, ah. Uh, short one today yeah. um yeah. feeling good about these three i mean three pretty clear ones i feel like with uh one that was a little more serious but still pretty clear um 
And I didn't even need to take an ibuprofen during this recording, which, like, I'm not saying makes me better than the rest of you, oh. but, like, it, it yeah, certainly doesn't say, help. I only got through half of my bottle of wine. Yeah. Yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited for I'm Bottle so Night, man. Now I can't think about night? anything else. Oh, <laughs> uh, we'll do. May- <laughs> we will do Bottle Night. I can't drink I that mean, much. You gotta understand. This is happening. Again, Capri Sun, please. All right. Well, uh, we will see you all next time. You know, for for bottle Fridays, we release these at seven a.m. Please do not drink mm. these alongside you know a <laughs> you bottle. You actually of get wine. a free bottle of wine uh, with the Patreon subscription. Yeah, the newest. That's not tier. true. That's not true. <laughs> it's called it's called Danny Sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Stop. Uh, all right. Bye-bye, bye bye, everyone. Bye bye.